Hello, everybody. You're on the mic. And on today's episode, we're going to continue um, continue the series I've been doing on classic animation series. Today, we're going to be talking about Ruby Spears Productions, the company that gave us such classics as um, The Centurions, Thundar the Barbarian, Alvin and the 1980s version of Alvin and the Chipmunks, um, the Plastic Man Comedy Adventure Hour, Goldie Golden ja um, Action Jack, and the 1988 Superman series. So without no further ado, let's let's get going and talk about this company, um, company and stuff. So Ruby Spears Productions, also known as Ruby Spears Enterprises, was a Burbank, California based um, American entertainment production company that specialized in animation with another branch in Rome, Italy. The firm was founded in 1977 by veteran writers and Scooby-Doo, Where Are You creators, Joe Ruby and Ken Spears. So that's the basic background. Now let's look at the history. Both Ruby and Spears started out as sound editors at Hanna-Barbera and later branched out into writing stories for such programs as Space Ghost and the Herculoids. In 1969, they were assigned the task of developing a mystery-based cartoon series for Saturday mornings, the result of which was Scooby-Doo, Where Are You?, which eventually, of course, would branch out into some of the other, like, the those meddling those meddling kids um, archetype of cartoon shows. Um, they were also writers and producers for DePady, Freeling Enterprises, particularly the Barclays and the Houndcats. And if and if you guys want to learn a little bit more about DePady, Freeling Enterprises, I did a I did a previous episode on on that particular studio. The, that was the main studio that was done a lot of the Pink Panther stuff. So, but if you want to learn a little bit more about them, check out my check out the, the on the mic episode um, on DePady Free Freeling Enterprises. Oh, moving on then. Ruby Spears Productions was founded in 1977, while Ruby and Spears were network executives at ABC, supervising the Saturday morning programming. ABC Entertainment President Fred Silverman wanted to create competition for Hanna-Barbera, which, which then provided the bulk of the Saturday morning content for all three major networks. Yes, they had become pretty big by this point. You know, DePady Free, Freeling was still around. Filmation had kind of died off a bit, you know, after the after the you know fall of um, Uncle P Croc's block, but um, and had moved into more um, syndicate, syndicated work. So at this point in time, Hanna Barbera was starting to develop a monopoly in Saturday, up for Saturday morning content. Silverman was concerned the studio was stretching their projects too thin, diluting the quality of their series, requiring competition. You know, so yeah, so basically. What you know, a network doesn't ask these guys, hey, why don't you guys start up a, a, a competing company so we can kind of, you know, get some competition going here and like really, you know, which is a good thing. The company's credits include the animated series Fang Face, um, Goldie Golden Action Jack, the Plastic Man Comedy Adventure Hour, or Comedy Adventure Show. Thundar the Barbarian, Rubik the Amazing Cube, the 1983 version of the Alvin and the Chipmunk series. And the reason, of course, they, ma they made that differentiation as well as I did because um, they co-produced that show with, of course, Alvin and the Chipmunk creator Ross Bag Bag Bagdasarian, who had previously pro produced the, sh um, the Alvin show back in the early 1960s. So this is the 80s version, basically. Mr. T, Sectars, The Centurions, which is another syndicated classic that you guys might want to check out. Um, 
1988 Superman series, the Police Academy, uh, the Police Academy animated series, and the American Mega Man cartoon series. Okay, only two pre-1991 series. Police Academy, the animated series, and Pittsburgh Pigs use Canadian rather than American voice talent like most of their other cartoon shows. So, yeah, so basically, and as I would recall, a lot of the Canadian voice, voice talent they would use, I believe, was a lot of the ones based in Vancouver, the ones that eventually got a lot of work through Ocean Studios, so earlier in their careers. Um, Ruby Spears was also responsible for the animated sequence in the 1988 film Child's Play um, and replaying the sequence as a fictional commercial in 1991, sequel Child's Play 3. Um, the Ruby Spears Studio was founded in 1977 as a subsidiary of Filmways. Um, and was sold in late 1981 to Taft Broadcasting, becoming a sister company to Hanna-Barbera Cartoon, or Hanna-Barbera Productions. And if you want more information on that, I, I also did a previous episode on Hanna-Barbera Productions that you guys might want to check out as well. In 1991, Ruby Spears was spun off into R.S. Holdings, most of the pre-1991 Ruby Spears Productions Library was sold along with Hanna-Barbera to Turner Broadcasting System, which in turn merged with Turner, Time Warner, now Warner Media, in 1986. So basically, that's where, you know, when, when Cartoon Network and eventually Boomerang got a lot of their earlier programming from back in the 90s and early 2000s was from picking up the libraries of Hanna-Barbera and Ruby Spears. So if you guys remember seeing like a lot of these cartoons on like Cartoon Network or Boomerang, you know, that's where they got a lot of the material from. Um, the Ruby Spears studio closed in 1996 after 19 years of operation. As of now, most of the original pre-91 um, Ruby Spears Enterprises library is now held by Warner Brothers through through Hanna Barbera Cartoon, Warner Brothers Animation, and Warner Brothers Family Entertainment. As of 2019, it is unclear where Ruby Spears post-1991 library is held. The exception is the Mega Man series, which is at least partially owned by DHX Media. So that's about the crust of the history of Ruby Spears. Um, Ruby Spears. So, you know, for those of you who might have grew up in the 80s watching, you know, as I said, watching like Fang Puss, Thunder, The Barbarian, um, Plastic Man, um, you know, Plastic Man's Comedy Adventure Hour, Goldie Golden Action Jack, um, Mr. T, Alvin the Chipmunks, Chuck, I think even Chuck Norris's Karate Commandos came out of Ruby Spears. A lot of the Saturday morning stuff that I just mentioned, also um, the syndicated classic, you know, um, Centurions. Um, that was all done by Ruby Spears. So with all that being said and done, let's move on to this day in each history. Today being, of course, May 19th, um, 2020. Let's take a look at what's happened on this day in each history. We have a couple couple of things that might interest you for, you know, in our pro wrestling section. On this date back in 1980, um, Rick Martel and... Roddy Piper would defeat the she the Sheep Herders, better known to WWF fans as the Bushwhackers, for the Vancouver version of the of the NWA Canadian Tag Team titles. 
on this date in 1980. On this date in 1980, Rick Martel and Roddy Piper would defeat the Sheep Herders, better known as the Bushwhackers, um, for the Vancouver version of the NWA Canadian Tag Titles um, wrestling for Vancouver All-Star Wrestling at the time. An NWA territory in Vancouver, British Columbia. And on this and that was 40 years ago. On this date, 1999, 21 years ago, DC Comics would release onto newsstands the fifth the fifth issue of Titans, the story Hy Hydrophobia. Um, so on this date in 1999, 21 years ago, Titans issue number five was was put out the newsstands by DC Comics. So, now, with all that being said, okay, now, with all that done, um, if you guys want to check the link below, if you want to contact me directly, my Discord link is down there. You can go ahead and direct message me on Discord. Uh, you can check out the Discord and join the Discord if you'd like. Um, also, I'm still promoting a bunch of different dub companies. Um, you know, uh, right now being a good time to really get caught up on, you know, old anime. Or even uh, if you guys have been catching these um, these old cartoon studio um, profiles, you know, um, even going back in time and, you know, you know, for those of you who are like maybe my age or even a little younger, you know, want to relive your memories of Saturday morning, look up some of these cartoons and check those out as well. Um, also, I'm still promoting, you know, I'm still promoting, uh, go, you know, Vic's GoFundMe as well as um, that umbrella guy and his daughter's, um, you know, com comic, comic um, on Indiegogo. Um, as always, guys, never feel like you have to donate. If, you have the means to, and it's on your heart to do so, please consider donating. If you've already donated, please consider donating again. And if you can't donate, you can still help out the cause by sharing the link. Because after all, you never know. You know, sharing is caring. You never know. Some, maybe somebody in your circle of friends may see it and say, you know, say, yeah, I want to help out too. You know, that's, that looks like a good thing to, to contribute to. I want to, you know, give them a hand too. You never know. doesn't hurt to ask. And if you like this content, I, I sincerely ask you to please consider liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing. I always look forward to the conversation with you guys as long as they're civil and respectful. You know, I hope you guys are finding a lot of this stuff informative and, you know, you know particularly, you know, looking back on some stuff maybe you grew up on and hopefully, you know, rekindle those fires, you know, because, you know, this agenda-pushing garbage that we're seeing nowadays in our entertainment whether it's, you know, the movies or comics or even in, you know, some of the cartoons that we're seeing today. It's just, yeah. You know, I prefer the simplicity of the stuff that I grew up on, you know, as opposed to some of this agenda-pushing, you know, baloney. So I'm sure a lot of you out there, too, just you just want to escape. You want to escape the real world. You don't want to be reminded of You want don't want to turn on your TV or your computer and be you know, reminded of it in your entertainment. You're trying to escape. You're trying to escape the garbage of this world, not be more indoctrinated to it. So, hope you guys will check out some of this stuff. And and also, don't forget, you know, this Friday will be my next Voices Big and Small premiere. I'm focusing in on Calgary-based voice actor Lucas Gilbertson. I hope you guys will join me for the premiere. Learn more about his his career and even some of the stuff he's doing right now. Um, and until tomorrow. Till tomorrow. Bye.